This video report is brought to you in association with Halcyon, a classic 95-foot Bermudan catch built in 1929, which is now available for charter. Hello and welcome to the start of the 2009 JP Morgan Asset Management Round the Island Race. In just 10 minutes time, Sarah Webb will fire the starting cannon and set the first of 1,779 boats off on this circuit of the Isle of Wight. It doesn't look as if it'll be record-breaking weather, although you can never tell. And Mike Slade on his monohull Leopard is out there defending his monohull record. And the multi-hull record holder Francis Joyon on iDeck is also here. So if anybody's going to break the record, it could be one of those two, all the extreme 40s, which includes a boat driven by Ben Ainsley. It's all to play for. We'll see you soon. First away at 7.30 with the large monohulls of Group Zero, the Open 60s and the Clipper 68s. At this stage, most of the fleet were starting towards the mainland end of the line. In a light northwesterly of only four to five knots, Leopard quickly moved to the front and headed towards Hurst, followed by the new 100-foot Liara. There were only four open 60s racing, and BT, with Seb Joss and Ella MacArthur on board, quickly pulled out a lead on the others, which included Steve White's toe in the water and Artemis. The Clipper 68s needed more wind, but the little RS400, which was not an entry but was sailing round in aid of the Isle of Wight Air Ambulance, was happy to take on the much bigger boats. Next away, ten minutes later, were the Malta hulls, and in complete contrast, the Gappers. Francis Joyon's round-the-world record holder, IDEC, dominated the fleet, but really wanted more wind to strut her stuff. The Extreme Forties, with Ben Ainsley driving Team Origin and Russell Coots on Team Aqua, also craved more breeze to make them fly. Alice 3 got the best start of the Gappers and was one of the few boats in this fleet to start inshore to get the benefit of a first of the ebb. She went on to finish fourth in class. Back at Cowes, the rest of the fleets were starting at 10 minute intervals in a sequence that would go on until 10 past nine. With the tide now turning inshore, the island end of the line became a place to start as the dayboat fleets and the IRC and ISC fleets headed off after the leaders. The sports boats bunched at the inner end, with many finding themselves over on the gun. IRC Group 1 did the same, and several boats faced a very long, slow return to the line in the light breeze against the now ebbing tide. I'll tell you what, every other boat seems to be a J-boat The light northwesterly allowed the first starters to fetch slowly down the Solent, with most not having to tack until they reached Yarmouth. Leopard was well clear at the front, as the multi-hulls astern, which had started ten minutes later, didn't have enough breeze to close the gap quickly. Leopard was surrounded by a small flotilla of press and spectator boats as she made her way through Hearst Narrows. But it had taken her an hour to get this far, and any hopes of a fast time had already vanished. Behind Leopard came BT, the first of the Extreme Forties, IDEC and Liara. The gloomy early morning had given way to sunshine as Leopard approached the iconic landmark of the Needles and led the fleet around at nine o'clock. Leopard hoisted an asymmetric and headed offshore on the jibing leg to St Catherine's Point. There was enough breeze at this stage to give some decent speed. Behind Leopard, the rest of the leading pack hoisted A-sails and headed offshore, chasing the leader. The extreme forties of Oman Sail, Team Aqua, Team Origin and Extreme Ribs were battling each other and taking distance out of a leading monohull. Also well placed at this stage were the TP-52s Panthera and Cutting Edge. Approaching the halfway stage at St Catherine's Point, 
the leading extreme forces caught and passed Leopard. It was a battle royal between Amansel Masira, steered by 49er bronze medalist Chris Draper, and Team Aqua, steered by Russell Coots. Coots held the advantage, but not for long. Oman Sel Masira broke through into the lead just before St. Katz, winning a jibing duel with Coots to lead the fleet past the turning mark at 10.23, about two hours, 40 minutes after their start. Behind the leaders came two more Extreme Forties. Ben Ainsley's Team Origin had third place, with Extreme Ribs in fourth. Then came IDEC, the second Oman Sale Extreme Forty, and the monohull leader Leopard. Here's a case of little and large. They both got the cell number GBR1, but the little dinghy catamaran overtaking Leopard was out to show that you don't need to spend millions of pounds to go around the island quickly. As the leaders headed up on the second half of the course, they were not to know that the wind was about to desert them and the race would get even slower. Meanwhile, back at the Needles, the number of boats rounding was increasing. This year's fleet saw the fourth highest entries in the race's 78-year history, defying the dramatic reduction in the number of entries for many of the regattas this year. The event's secret is, of course, its uniqueness. It's a yacht race wrapped in a celebration of sailing mixed with a festival atmosphere. This is the race where Olympic medalists, America's Cup champions, round the world record holders, in fact the cream of every branch of a sport, rub wet. shoulders and occasionally gunnels with amateur racers and cruisers who make up the bulk of the 10,000 or so sailors. For most of the sailors, this 50 mile race is the longest they'll ever do. And for many, it's the only race of the year. But it's one they just can't miss, even in the middle of a recession. This video report was brought to you in association with Halcyon, the classic 95-foot Bermudan catch built in 1929, which is now available for charter.